On this episode of the Ritual Misery podcast, uh, Kent, Kent, Kent's a cobra? Are you a snake? Ki-i! I mean, uh, Cobra Kai. Oh, oh, okay, okay. That was that, that was your cue, dude. You're supposed to go. Oh, with that. yeah. See, I'm I'm so new at this. Um, yeah, I'm also. But something I'm not new at is uh, Movie Pass, and uh, we're gonna talk about uh, things that have changed there. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I got shot in the knee. <sighs> that sounds more interesting than anything that happened during my week. And there we go. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 173 for Thursday, the 10th of May, 2018. This is a short two lifelong friends and their guests with when we have them uh, celebrate all things geek. And I'm Amos, that's Kent, and uh, that actually went better than I thought it was going to go. Um, yeah, man, uh, new show intro that we just announced like three seconds before going live. That was, uh, that did go better than, we didn't feel as badly as I was expecting. Right, you know that that's that's clearly the the point there. Um, we'll work on it and uh, we'll make it better. If you got ideas for our show, how we should intro it and be more in line with I don't know a real podcast, uh, let us know. Uh, podcast at ritualmisery dot com. Send us your yeah. emails and give us your uh, your best ideas of how we should intro the show. And no, Kent's not going to show his wang. His camera doesn't zoom in that far. Uh that well. True. Uh, also, eight is a lie if you measure from major. I say major. Major. I, dude, I do you say do you say measure like a hard like a very hard e like measure like, or do you say like like a little bit of a Midwest twang on your on your like e a part of the syllable like a no, measure um, or something? Well, I, I get a measuring tape, so it's definitely right. a hard e because it's measuring. It's not it's not measuring. Right. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Or 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 ma- like majoring, but but the soft J like major. Like no. I don't know. I I had no idea my entire life that 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 was even a thing, especially a thing that I did, until a few years ago. My kids pointed out to me like, "Why are you saying it that way?" Saying what? What way? Yeah. <laughs> and now every time I say measure, I either just fuck it up instinctually is instinct instinctively uh <laughs> speaking of fucking hey we're fucking just gonna up make up words uh we're just gonna make up our own vocabulary yeah. uh but yeah so i either I either just fuck it up or what happens most of the time i am overly hyper aware of how i'm saying it mm. and i have to say it a lot because i'm in a security profession and the term security measure is part of my everyday vocabulary vernacular so i spend most of the day over concentrating saying measure mm. so you must take we, these measures we uh when i was in first grade so i was like what six or seven years old or whatever a friend of my mom's uh re- called out the fact that we said warsh oh god yes and it made me hi- like even at even in first grade i was like hyper aware of warsh Yep. So I st- I forced myself to stop saying it. I wish I had the power to do that now because there's tons of little habits. I would love to just have the pure willpower to say, you know what? I'm not doing that anymore. Yep. <clears throat> um, uh, yeah, I said I said washcloth until I was about 12 probably, and I had the same. No, 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 no. no. It's probably about 10. Like we're nine where, or 10 years old. Where's the fucking R, yo? Right. Yep. But both of our families, like all up. All up the ancestry chain. That's how they say it. Yep. Wash. Go, go <laughs> get, get in there and wash your hands. Uh, just uh, go ahead and throw that in the washing machine. Yeah. yeah the washing machine. Yeah. There's an R in there too. <laughs> <Can't>, <laughs> just. <laughs> washing machine. What, 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 what accent is it? Uh, is it is, uh, I don't know if it's Cockney or like the, the Royal British or whatever. They. They put a there's like an R sound at the end of any word that ends in A. And oh, that's that's uh that that's Scottish. Is Scottish it? has the hard R's. Yeah, it's yeah, it's just weird. It, like they just add this extra little letter in there for no reason, and that's that's always what I think of when I hear people from back home talking. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Need to wash my car. Uh, is that a is that is that like is that special? Do you have to pay extra for that? <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh my uh, gosh. Um, hey man, so I got shot in the knee, dude. Yeah. What? What man? Uh, were you uh, like robbing a convenience store and the the clerk just like pulled out a shotgun from under the till or what happened there? Uh, no. Actually, I'm old. So, um, uh, okay, so you're like you're too old to be hanging out around middle schools, and um, when you went to pick up your kid, the security guard was like, "Whoa, what are you doing here, old man?" He took me out with shot a, you in the knee. <laughs> took me out with his with his with his taser, <laughs> <laughs> right in the knee. <clears throat> Take that, old man. <laughs> I just I just stood there while my knee kicked it back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I, I've had pain uh, in in like in this one spot of my knee for like years, and it's just been getting worse now that I'm trying to be more active with my back recovery and everything else. So I went to the doctor, and uh, they were like, okay, well, we'll send you over to the orthopedic guys. And I was like, okay, cool. Should have sent me over to the geriatric guys. Because apparently I've got a, a, a not common form of arthritis on the back side of my kneecap. Because of course you do. Right. Because apparently that's the thing that happens when people have ACL replacements. It's like this, this one specific uh, arthritis that is very common with people that have had ACL replacements. Okay, and you happen to be that person. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I am. I am part of that statistic, as as so many fucking statistics are. Uh, so yeah, he gave me this big ass. You know, he he comes in with his needle, and he's like, "Okay, uh, we're you know, just cleaning up, cleaning up, cleaning up." And he goes, "All right, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and do this." And I, and I said, "Okay, I'm just gonna lay here, and close my eyes, and pretend you don't exist because I don't deal well with needles, you know." And <laughs> and what, what was his response? Oh, just like my wife. And I was like, oh. <laughs> so, oh, geez. so it literally okay. went down like this. All right, we're going to start now. Okay, I'm just going to lay here and pretend you don't exist. Oh, just like my wife. Here comes the stick. <laughs> oh, I didn't feel it. Huh. Just like my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I couldn't say that because I felt the hell out of that needle going into my knee. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Not like his wife, apparently. No, no. Um, uh, but yeah, so my knee feels better. My muscles are all shitty now because he jabbed me in through my knee. But, uh, but yeah, I guess that's better. I don't have the pain anymore. That that particular pain went, went away. I think it transferred it, tra traded it in for a different pain. But <laughs> well, I mean, that's kind of been the story of your life about the last decade, right? Oh shit, you're you're you are not lying. Hey, um, what has been going on with you, dude? Um, you know, uh, sound mixer issues, mm. uh, technical problems. I mean, you know, as, as podcasters do, right. Mm -hmm. Um, honestly, not much else. I, I watched a cool TV show. No, you didn't. Yeah. Well, did you watch Karate Kid when you were a kid? Uh, of course you did. Only 500,000 million something else times. Yeah. I was going to say, of course you did because you grew up in the eighties. <clears throat> Right. Well, YouTube Red, as most people know by now, I think, has a like a sequel television show to Karate Kid mm -hmm. where Daniel LaRusso and Johnny Lawrence are all grown up middle aged men with uh, children and modern problems and still all of that kind of stuff at each other. Still. Yeah. Still basically hate each other. And um, YouTube Red, uh, obviously, it's a it's, it's behind a paywall. It's a paid subscription streaming service offered by YouTube, of course. Well, um, well it'd be really funny if but, Netflix had YouTube Red. Yeah, I know. Um, you know, I, I still can't get over the fact that they named it YouTube Red. That right. is so close to Red Tube. Red Tube, yeah. Yep. Um, Children yeah, don't you, go to Red Tube. Don't. Yeah, you don't. don't <laughs> you don't want to ask your parents. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to go to Red Tube on your work computer. Let's just say that. Yeah. Uh, I was delighted to discover this week that the first two episodes of this 10 episode series are free on regular YouTube. So of course I watched them and it was wonderful <laughs> in the most corny fucking way, dude. I, they are exactly what you would think they are. They're, they're goofy, corny characters from the eighties that grew up to become like agitated, grumpy old men, well, middle-aged men, right? Uh, that are still written in the same 80s campy sort of way. Uh, Johnny Lawrence is like the most out of touch dad. Like he's a dad. Like the character is out of touch in the sense that, you know, he's not a very, uh, you know, active in his child's life dad. 
but he's also out of touch in the sense that I don't think he his mindset left the 80s. Like the things that he says, the like non PC things that he says for 2018 <laughs> would have been just what everyone says in 1984. <laughs> uh, <laughs> It's it's great, dude. And Daniel LaRusso is this car salesman that thinks he's hilarious and full of wisdom. And uh, in in reality, he's just kind of a goofy guy, but has a heart of gold. And man, it is just it's great. So what I'm going to do probably this week is get the free 30 day trial of YouTube Red Mm -hmm. and binge the other eight episodes. And they're only like a half hour, so it's going to take me four hours to binge this entire TV show. And, uh, man, it's great. I recommend it highly, to, especially to anybody that grew up in the 80s and, and gave even half a shit about Credit Kid. Like, you got to watch this. What is the over-under on this being better than One Punch Man? Um, dude, no contest. Oh, yeah. This is clearly better. Yeah, clearly better. <laughs> and guess what? I have an opinion on this show. <laughs> oh my gosh. Mm. Um, yeah, that was interesting from a few weeks ago that uh, we were talking about One Punch Man and said literally nothing about it. <laughs> we're doing so splendidly this time. Hey, um, so David's birthday is this month, and he's been wanting a, a, an upgrade for his graphics card. Of course, he's got my, my old graphics card, a, a, a GTX uh, 950. So mm. I went out, and the only... Uh, graphics cards are still in this place right now where they're still really expensive, but NVIDIA is trying to fight that by keeping the NVIDIA-branded cards at a, at a, a, a regular price, if you will. And... Um, I found him a 1070 Founders Edition, which is the, the NVIDIA version, for the right price, which was right $400 or so. Um, and went ahead and said, okay, we'll, 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 we'll splurge on this. Because he had actually saved up. Um, explaining gifts for my kids is kind of weird because they have a standard amount. Like $200 is a standard gift in our, in our family. But then they can like build. Oh, can I, can I join your family? No. Um, <laughs> You need $200 to buy, buy a new mixer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's so we went out and we bought this and got a, got a good price on it and gave it to him early because his birthday is on the 25th or 24th rather. And right after that, we're leaving. They're going to be going away for the summer and he wouldn't have any time to play with it. The boy actually like broke out and, and had tears in his eyes because he was expecting like a 1050 that we, you know, would the normal price range of card would be about a 1050. He got that 1070, and he has been every time he plays, he's just like wow. <laughs> and it's, uh, so he's got he's got basically the same card in his that I have in my computer up here, and or down here, and it blew his mind. And I got to tell you, dude, I didn't realize how bad his graphics were on his computer using the old 950 until he swapped it over, and I was like, oh, that's insane. Because he's on a smaller monitor than me, so I just thought it was the monitor. No, it wasn't the monitor. It was when- the graphics card. When Minecraft looks blurry for um, Minecraft, yeah, right, exactly, yeah. Hey, this is pretty pixelated. Um, you know, blew him away, man. And it, it took me back to that that like you know he when I when I was that age and it was basically like giving him a new computer like a, or a, a video game system like here's a Super Nintendo. You know, completely just amazed. It was awesome. Well, great. That's that's really cool, man. Because a lot of times in. in, in incremental upgrade is kind of like, eh, I think I can tell the difference, but when you can like severely upgrade and, and see like, Oh my God, mm. like I'm seeing new colors. Uh, that's, that's pretty great. Yeah. I was like, uh, here's your birthday present. Oh, and, and also your Christmas present. So enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to tell you that until December, but <clears throat> no, 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 no. My, my wife made that very clear. She was like, this is your Christmas and your birthday. So enjoy it. And I was like, damn vicious. But that's <laughs> savage mama. <laughs> yeah. Man, um, a couple of weeks ago, I was bitching about how movie pass basically fucked over the, the best deal out there uh, by announcing this, uh, the, this it's basically the same price that I paid, except you only get four movies in a month instead of somewhere in the range of 28 to 31 movies in a month. Right. Well, 
they've sort of redeemed themselves a little bit this week by bringing back their old deal of one, uh, you know, up to one movie a day. Mm -hmm. Uh, They didn't, they didn't bring back the 795 price point that I got it at. They put it at 995, which was like the original deal. They still got the BS uh, three month, uh, four movies a month deal. Uh, I believe that's seven ninety five a month. If you want to go, uh, for that. yeah. If you want to go for that, if you want to save a couple of bucks. Yeah. Uh, but obviously, the the best value if you go to a lot of movies is going to be the uh, quote unlimited mm-hmm. one, uh, which I think is great. But I can't give them super high praise because they pissed me off again. <laughs> They changed their terms of service to where you can only see any given movie once on the movie pass. Was it not that way already? No. Hmm. No, it was unlimited to the point where up to once a day, like like Infinity War. I would go see Infinity War probably about four times in the theater. And the day that, or actually, like the day before, I was I was intending to go do that. Right. Movie Pass said, uh, "Oh yeah, hey, uh, we, we've got a, a change in our, our terms of service. Uh, check this out." And uh, yeah, nope, can't do it. Now it's still it's still a way better deal than buying tickets at the, at the theater. No, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's it's great. This is like, I mean, this is the epitome of first world problem. Like, can you find me <laughs> a better example of first world problem? Uh this is yeah, it's an insane deal, dude. No matter no matter what. It's uh, um, you know, we we're not sponsored by them at all, but I dude, if if you watch movies a lot, moviepass.com, it is ridiculous ridiculous how good of a deal it is my thing is we have a theater literally four miles from the house like it's right there it's right next to it's actually on the same property as walmart and walmart is less than four miles away so i i if i just had time i would use this all the time and i think it's one of those things like i might i'm either the if I have the time to use it, I'll buy it or you know, buying it would, would make and force me to use it because it's right there. Or mm. I would buy it, plan on using it and never use it, which is, you know, how their business model is. is. So I'm, I'm either the, sure. the best case or the worst case scenario, one or the other. And I don't know which. I'm yeah. tempted to buy it to find out, though. <laughs> right. It, is it still a one year contract to get that 995 price? I believe it is. I, I tried to find that information hmm. just before the show, and um, I, I couldn't find it because the best way to find out is like to click through the uh, – like pretend like you're purchasing it. Hmm. And uh, I didn't want to re-enter any of my information, so I was like, ah, screw it. Fair enough. Now you can find d- out for yourself. Do you only have it, or d- did you get it for like Steph and Lucas and whatever? No, it's it's just me because I wanted to get it and try it out to make sure that everything works. With because our theater is kind of you know it's not a large chain, and I was a little skeptical if it was even going to work for us. Right. So I got it. Everything worked great, and I was like, hell yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get this for everybody. And then that's when they came out with that that stupid uh, four movies a month plus that yeah, <laughs> what I Heart Radio crap. It's like ugh. ugh. Well, I mean, um, speaking of movies, let's, uh, let's let me let me turn my rocker up here. Welcome to your BT Movie Draft Minute, presented by DiamondClub.tv for the week of May seventh, two thousand eighteen. I'm your host, Big Voice Jay. I once thought I had mono for an entire year. Turned out I was just really bored. Let's go to the scores. <laughs> Team The Vaughn Squad is in last place, still waiting for their first film. Team Walking Drunk is on the board, with Overboard putting them in fifth place with $15.9 million. Team Movie Party is in fourth place with $56.5 million. Team Game Night is in third place with $133.3 million. Team Ritual Misery is in second place with $254.3 million. And with another blockbuster nine-figure weekend, Team Have a Drink is on top with $525.6 million. That's your Movie Draft Minute. All totals are accurate as of 8 p.m. Central, Tuesday, May 8th, 2018. Avengers, dude. Killing it. I am actually just surprised that we're only behind by double. (laughs) Right? (laughs) Oh, my God, dude. Like, I don't think there's any hope. 
for us catching up? Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We, we, we could get lucky if we get lucky as of right now, we're still leading the, on, on the dollar spent per dollar, whatever like the, the, the value. Yeah, yeah. Like value per dollar spent. Now that has a possibility of tanking. If uh, this mission impossible movie tanks, we're kind of toast, but if the mission impossible movie pulls in numbers like it normally does, I think we still got a chance at this. Like there's a, it's it's an outside chance, but we're we're gonna we're gonna still have a good showing. I think we're I think we've got a good chance for second. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! If if you guys out there are, are wondering what we're talking about, it's it's of course the B team movie draft that we did uh, what five weeks ago now, something like mm. that. That if you if you want to follow along on the stats and see what's going on, tinyurl.com slash b team movie draft summer 2018 that's an incredibly long url it's going to wow. be in the show notes and um if you can throw that in the in the chat for them as well uh, th- this is the read only spreadsheet where you can follow along it's got real time updates from uh, box office mojo so that you can see exactly where everyone stands at any given moment um it's a really good product it's great it's I, this is my go-to thing. I open this several times during the week. It's not just during this show and in, in the show prep. It, it's great, man. And I'm having such a blast doing the uh, the movie draft thing. Uh, man. Um, I we, we have a movie coming out this weekend, Life of the Party. It's with that... <laughs> uh, oh, what's that lady's name? She was in Ghostbusters. Um, yeah, I'm drawing a blank on her name. Um, yeah. Comedians of any... Of any gender uh, that has that started making movies in the last decade, I cannot remember any of their names. If they weren't making movies in the eighties, nineties, I don't remember. Melissa McCarthy. I always mess it up because I always yeah. think Jenny McCarthy, but no, not not the same. Yeah, no. Melissa McCarthy is is hilarious. Mm-hmm. She's really really funny. And she's I've, great. I've seen some previews for this. It actually looks pretty good. I just I don't know if it's going to be. I mean, we spent seven dollars on it. So if it brings in like seventy million dollars, you gotta expect it's gonna at least do that. But if it brings in that, we're we're doing good for it. So, dude, if it brought in seventy million dollars, that would be fucking like earth shattering. Hmm. It's gonna bring in like twelve dollars. Uh, <laughs> Over overboard <laughs> no, I, like, last I weekend brought in it, eighteen, the lowest so far this year. Yeah, and I was gonna say I'm I'm expecting like twenty twenty five million maybe for this movie. Uh, I, comedies like this, like unless you're talking Deadpool or, or, um, yeah, you know, like hell super troopers Two, highly anticipated comedy. And it was actually really funny right now. It's only sitting at $26 million and that's yeah. about as much as it's going to make. So I don't have any, any amount of hope for life at the party. Uh, and you, you spoke about Deadpool too. That's coming up next weekend. Yeah, that's uh, excited. That's, the, and next weekend's kind of like it's here, here in the Lemos household. It's a crazy weekend, so that's going to be uh, that's that's I don't know. I don't know. If, I don't know if I'll be able to make that one, dude. I'm I'm super excited about the pretty much the next two weekends: Deadpool two and Solo the week following. Right, man. I cannot wait for either one of those movies. It's going to be God. It's going to be great. Cannot yeah. wait. All right, man. Um, hey, we uh, we are supported by our listeners at patreon.com slash ritual misery. Uh, each one of these wonderful people have given us a little bit of a little bit of, of what they make to help us make this possible. And we are very appreciative of everyone over there. And if you give a fuck and you would like to give a buck to this show, cruise on over to ritualmisery.com slash support or patreon.com slash ritual misery, and you'll find many ways to help us keep this show going because Kent needs a new mixer, apparently. <laughs> yes, and I definitely appreciate their support <laughs> over at patreon.com slash ritual misery. Also, I appreciate the subscribers on twitch.tv slash ritual misery. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so we uh, our, our main discussion topic for, for the evening is a story sent in to us by M. Beam. He's in the chat room right now. And it was, it was submitted via our Reddit at uh, reddit.com slash r slash ritual misery. And I can't, would you like to read this headline? Because I, I almost, it took us a while to bring this because I didn't want to read the story because I thought it was just flim flam, but it's from an actual 
uh, I highly recognized um, uh, a new online newspaper, and I was like, "Holy cow!" Okay, so can't what, what, give us this headline. I had a similar reaction, especially when I saw it in the show notes. I was like, "Are we really doing this?" the The article is entitled "Chinese condoms are too small." I I was like, "What kind of shit is this?" But like everyone knows in the media, if you want clicks, you got to have a catchy headline. You you have to have clickbait, mm-hmm. right? This was a this was an article entitled in such a manner that you couldn't not click on it. Uh, but it actually has a, a very interesting story here. It's talking about the AIDS epidemic and how it affects Africa and in particular Zimbabwe. That is the country that has the highest level or the highest uh, infection rate, I guess, is is how we would say that. The highest infection rate among the population. I mean, they're sitting at like 13 point something percent of their population is infected. Right. And they are um, they're a developing country. So they're a little bit behind with, you know, contraception and and just uh, public awareness, public health issue type stuff. Right. And they've had a, a very big push over the last few years to bring contraception and uh, you, you know, health, advanced health services and things like that to the country. Yeah. And one snag that they found with their uh, contraceptive usage was that their main supplier for, for that product comes from China. And they only make one size. And uh, apparently, a lot of the customers that they have in Zimbabwe are, uh, shall we say, um, uh, a little more blessed than the average uh, manufacturer of that brand. Yeah. So yeah, this is a this is a matter of, and it's almost a matter of of of, of, of taste. I don't want to say taste because that's that's. Preference, preference. Pre- preference, yes. It's almost a matter of preference over like the the, the condoms work. They're just not as comfortable. It's not a comfortable fit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, the the takeaway on this though that I saw though, and this is amazing. This is a really good story. This is something I would never have found my own. Um, I don't know why Embeam found it, but. Uh, more power to them. Keep bringing stories like this because this is a this is a good read actually. Um, the takeaway from this one, the, the the one little line in here that I couldn't uh, couldn't get past without thinking about and actually really developing some thought that I hadn't thought of before. Uh, Zhao, which is this dude in you know this Chinese guy that's helping with these uh, these condoms in China, Zhao said the customers around the world had different requirements with Chinese men preferring thinner condoms while not worrying about the size. Meanwhile, customers in North America like a softer contraceptive. And I was like, I, I, I never really, I always thought like different sizes and, and everything. It was just a gimmick because any condom I ever used, it worked fine. You know, it didn't right. add anything. didn't take any, well, it took a little away, but you know, it, it, there was, a, it was just, it was always the same. Like I never had like, Oh, well, I, I'm, I, I only use this condom. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, so the uh, the glow in the dark ones didn't do anything for you. Uh, no. Or like uh, you know, watermelon watermelon flavored. Uh, you you didn't care for those. Uh, I, I, I I can't say that I ever uh, had or provided the opportunity to enjoy <laughs> the flavor of a flavored uh, condom. That just it always seemed a little weird to me. So I never went down that route. Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, thank you, Mbeam, for sending that in. It was th- the headline was catchy and entertaining in itself, but the article was actually uh, a, a, a bit of an intellectual read, even though it's uh, it's a quick one. It's like probably a three minute read. Uh, mm-hmm. We're going to include a, a link in the show notes for that. I encourage everyone to check it out. It's actually. It's actually well written. It's one of those things that brings you to a more international mindset. Oh yeah, hey, there's these other issues going on outside of America that we normally wouldn't think about because we are literally in the land of plenty. Even though I've got some issues on that as well. But anyway, um, we also had one of these this week, man. This is uh, this is interesting. 
And it, it's it's more interesting when I actually hit the button and have the sounder up. So I'm gonna turn the turn the turn the turn the thing up and then hit it. I don't know why I ever turned that one down because that one doesn't have the feedback that line four does, which is from the computer. I don't know why, but anyway. So <sighs> so TED Talks are back at least for this week. <laughs> we haven't done one of these in a while. No. This week, Amos, you chose Bart Knowles, Three New Ways to Kill Mosquitoes. Okay, so why- I don't know if I told you last year or not, but the Alaskan state bird is the two-inch mosquito. I call it the two-inch mosquito. I'm sure it's got an actual Latin name. I don't care. The suckers are two inches long. They'll bite you, and they turn you into a fucking raisin in about 30 seconds flat. They piss me off, and they're back. So I had mosquitoes on the mind. I went to the TED site, and, oh, look, here's three new ways to kill mosquitoes. Piqued my interest. Right? (laughs) Right. Yeah, dude. So my thing, so before we get into the details of this talk, I do want to say that I was highly impressed with the findings of this scientist and his team. And I was like, holy shit, we're saved. Until I realized that this was in 2012. It is now 2018. We've had six years. What the fuck? Uh, He brings up three points, right? Mm. So three things that, uh, three discoveries that his team made. Right. The first of which was cheese. Well, Tell us how, how he got to that discovery about, uh, about mosquitoes. So they found that different types of mosquitoes are actually attracted by scent. It's not by sight or by anything else. It's by scent. They, they, the, they like to smell us. And these certain, certain types of mosquitoes were attracted to the smell of feet. So they got some Limburger cheese that smells an awful lot like feet, tried it out, and no shit. The mosquitoes were like, hey, look at that. So they started, um, they started identifying, well, they, they target us by smell. So if we can attract them to traps according to the smell, we'll be more likely to catch more of them instead of using these other, these other means. Like here, the, uh, the carbon dioxide, uh, 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 ma- uh, no, it's not a mask. It's like this little thing that burns um, uh, natural gas or, or propane and it basically ca- causes a carbon dioxide cloud, like a light cloud, and they're supposed to be attracted to it and then they get sucked in a little thing. I don't know how well they work, but a lot of people around here have them. I'm <laughs> right. still getting stung to shit, so I guess they don't work too good. Um, but they were found that the smell is what they're actually attracted to. It's not our uh, our exhales and our breaths and things like that. It's our, it's the smell of our our bodies. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna so, have to, I'm gonna find some Limburger cheese so that I can set that out this summer. Uh, so the next <laughs> thing was dogs. How did dogs play into this? Not only are they attracted to smell, but ponds with uh, with larva in them, with mosquito larva, have a certain smell. So the dogs can be trained to find that certain smell so you can actually treat the pond when the mosquitoes are at their most vulnerable by you know putting something on there and, and killing the larva instead of waiting until they're flying and, and biting everybody. Right, so dogs being natural uh, sniffers, mm. they they tra- they tra- they yeah, they trained these dogs to recognize the smell of certain types of mosquitoes, and that led them to to d- discovering the like large uh, you know larva clusters and right. and whatnot. Because otherwise, it was just kind of a crapshoot. You'd go out there and yep, I'm gonna go spray for mosquitoes. Yeah, you go spray uh, all the water, but you didn't spray the little potholes of in in the mud where the larvae are. You, it doesn't do anything for you. Exactly, and they they found that dogs are very effective at uh, not only discovering uh, mosquito larvae, but also uh, the main reason, other than mosquitoes being annoying, the main reason that that mosquitoes gotta go is because they spread malaria. Malaria right. is a huge huge killer uh what is especially it especially in, in africa yeah yeah in africa it's it's what one child every 30 seconds or at least from 2012 when right. when this talk took place one child every 30 seconds is dying from mal- malaria mm-hmm. it's something like uh, like seven I, I believe he said it's like the equivalent of seven 747 jets crashing every day or something per, per like day that. yeah per day uh insane yeah. insane so so they got to go so another thing that the dogs can do, these dogs that they that they train to to smell out the uh, the mosquitoes are also able 
to smell the malaria virus. Right. So they can smell. So like in populations where they have like nearly wiped out the uh, the infection, like that particular pandemic, there's always like, you know, a few outliers, a few people out there that kind of get missed. And, uh, and, you know, unfortunately, a few weeks later end up dying or whatever. These dogs can smell those folks out so that they can get treatment. And that's amazing. Yeah, it's uh, essentially our bodies put out a different smell when we have malaria than when we don't. And they can be, they can be trained to track that down, which, again, just awesome. And the third thing that they did was there's a pill and he didn't explain what the pill was. Right. So, and we don't know if it's still in testing or whatever. We know he, well, he said he took one on stage and then he showed a demonstration. He's basically, it, these mosquitoes, they'll come and suck your blood, of course, and then die within like a couple hours after you're sucking your blood. Like, it's just. Yeah. No, actually, it, it was 30 minutes. He it, said within 30 minutes. Yeah. It, it, it appeared all- to be like 100% mortality. I'm sure there's like one of them that was like, yeah, fuck you. Um, yep. of course it has to be hundred percent mortality for it to be effective because otherwise all you do is, oh, the antibacterial thing that we're going through now where we have antibacterial resistant bacteria. So, um, <laughs> right. but yeah, and, and I don't know, all of this sounded great to me. I've been in Hawaii and Alaska to the States that in my opinion have more mosquitoes than anywhere else I've ever lived, including also Okinawa, Japan. I was going to say, including Okinawa and Louisiana and South Carolina, like all these places, mm. uh, Hawaii and Alaska are the worst. Amazing. So, um, I I thought this was great. I think mosquitoes have got to go. Uh, I, I read one at one time. I don't know if this is still true or whatever. Um, I read at one time that mosquitoes were like the one animal on the planet that we have zero use for. Yeah, like they can go away and everybody will be fine. Yeah, yeah. You like know? their only their only benefit to our ecosystem is, and I hate to put it this way, but like population control. Like that's right. the only positive thing that they do at all. Well, po- positive uh, on a on a geological scale, not in. Well, on, sure, on sure. The, I mean, yeah, I mean, like a like on a like an eon scale, like a you know, right. Uh, yeah, like a, like in a computer simulation world kind of thing. Not yeah. not when we're talking about real humans. Um, yeah. So obviously they they are a complete detriment to to us. Hey, did you hear about uh, Illinois trying to legalize marijuana? Uh, I did not. And uh, like the head of the state school for drug sniffing dogs said that if they legalize marijuana, they'll have to euthanize all of their dogs. That's bullshit. Um, because it's too hard to untrain them for for the smell of marijuana. It's, no, you don't euthanize a dog. What the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. No, you don't even euthanize a dog that's too old to do canine duties. Right. The dog gets adopted and it goes home and lives a happy life. Right. It's such, euthanized dogs. It's such complete Shut bullshit up. and spin. It just pissed me off. But I, we were talking about dogs. I figured I'd fucking mention that. Yeah. No, I'm I'm spun up now. Like fuck those people <laughs> that say that. <laughs> that's. You know what? No. No. Try to euthanize. The, like the entire canine police force and see what the fuck happens in your particular yeah. city or county. Like, my, nope. my thing is if, if the dogs are going to still smell the pot and they're, you know, Oh, we can't retrain to be bomb. You don't have to retrain them to be bomb sniffing dogs. You just let them do their job. And if they catch you with pot, guess what? Too fucking bad. You know what? Hey, we're going to have a transition period of about five years. Cause that's, I think that's about the average uh, uh, working lifespan of most canines. Uh, mm-hmm. It's like five to seven years, something like that. Um, yeah. We're going to have a transition period about five to seven years where if you're carrying pot, you're more likely to get to get sniffed up by a dog. You're just going to have to fucking deal with it. Yeah, absolutely. That or or if all the dogs were good for is is finding pot. Like there's uses for them other than <laughs> other than law enforcement. Right. But they but they were like it was it was it was uh, marijuana, cocaine, amphetamines. Um. Uh, shit. There's there's a total of five things that they're trained very well for, and right. marijuana was one of them. Well, guess what? If you're carrying pot, don't carry any of the other ones with you, and you're good because the dog is sniff you. Right. You're carrying exactly. spot. You get on your way. Yep. Exactly. You're you're gonna have to give up like probably 15 minutes of your life while you get or, searched, and then uh, or hide all nice hide all your meth and your cocaine in the pot. <laughs> 
Right. I'm not sure it works that way. So, but, so the, um, the dog sniffs you up and you're just like, yeah, hey, it's just a bag of pot. And they're like, okay, cool, go on. And you're like, yeah, you go over and smoke your rocks or whatever. It's, I mean, <laughs> no I smoke one, rocks. Yeah. <laughs> no one's going to complain about this for at least five or 10 years, man. Like, oh, this is so stupid. I was so pissed when I read it. I didn't even like dig too deep into it. Yeah, it's upsetting. Oh, man. Okay. So, uh, what else we got this week, man? This has been, uh, this has been fun. Uh, yeah, dude, it, it, it's great. Uh, you know what? I, uh, you keep talking while I look up some information. I may uh, have <laughs> an announcement. Um, I may so, not. So, so, uh, uh, hmm. This is, I'm going to, I'm going to call again for the, uh, the, our, our call of action for the week. If you have a particular way that you would like us to, uh, intro the show, if you think, Hey, I've got a great intro for you. Uh, why don't you try this instead of the typical, us bullshitting and me just chopping it up and releasing it somehow to make Kent look stupid. Um, <laughs> let us know. Give give us ideas. Give us other podcasts that you like the way they intro and you think we would fit in very well. We tried the TMS one this morning, this evening, and it 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 was functional. <laughs> yeah, I mean, with practice, that could that could be great. We could be really good at that. Um, not sure if we want to directly rip off <laughs> D- TMS. Uh, but it's a it's a doable one. So yeah, give us your ideas, ritual or no, I'm sorry, podcast at ritualmisery dot com. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing that you guys should do because I in fact do not have an announcement to make. <laughs> we may or may not have a guest next week, and I do not re- want to reveal this person's name yet. Mm. However, what mm. I would love for you guys to do is follow the Ritual Misery podcast on Twitter. Mm. at Ritual Misery, Mm -hmm. and this guest will be announced possibly later this evening. In fact, probably later this evening, Uh, but it depends on certain circumstances. Um, uh, It's kind of a coin toss at this moment. So follow us at Ritual Misery on Twitter for possibly a big announcement. Yep. And uh, we're going to go ahead and tell you right now that the last, is it the last show of this month? I think it's the last show of this month. Yes. <clears throat> the last show of this month on the 31st and the first show of June on the 7th, I will not be here. So if you have ideas for Kent for his two solo shows, he's going to either have to pull off or not do. Um, send him, send him our way at podcast at ritual misery.com. Let us know or tweet us at ritual misery. Right. Um, yeah. And in, in fact, uh, I was just thinking about this the other day. I am probably going to do one, sh- one solo show, um, the other one, I think I'm going to be out of town as well. So we Ooh. will probably in about a month, we are looking at skipping a week, taking a, a, a down, a rare, a very rare, mm. <laughs> uh, down week for the show. And then upon our return, we have a gigantic guest. Do you, do you want to announce that now or do you want to save that? Um, I mean, we we can we can say it. We've been planning it for for months now. It's, I mean, it's it's just okay. It's just it's, it's just Tom. Yeah, it's just our buddy Tom. It's just Tom. Just Tom. Uh, that's gonna <laughs> that's gonna be uh with the eleventh or eighteenth. Which, which date is that? Or no, I'm sorry, it's neither of those. It, it can't of those. be either one of those. <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh what are we looking at the 21st i think it's June? uh no i think i thought of the, mm, hmm. wow I this know. is good radio it this is, is it, good radio i think it's the 14th i think it's the week we come back right the so week, week anyway so the the tom it's not just our our next door neighbor tom or the tom that we grew up with it is the one and only tom Merritt is going to be mm-hmm. our guest so look for him mid-june um, and he will be, be he will be fresh off his trip from australia in fact yeah, so we're gonna have we're gonna have lots to talk about. It's mm. gonna be awesome. Yep. Uh, um, he of course was one of the guests that we had on episode 100. This is gonna be like episode somewhere in the neighborhood of episode 180. Uh, so almost uh, like half of the podcast life ago he was on. <laughs> so that's gonna be great. Looking forward to that. Um, All right, man. So uh, Twitter uh, at Ethan Kane for me at Del Noche or RM underscore Del Noche for you. Yep, at um, Ritual Misery, Del Noche or Del Noche seventy seven everywhere else. At Ritual there. Misery for the show itself, give us your ideas, kick us some ideas. If you want to m- want me to stop eating damn chips on the damn podcast, because I know I need to, because I'm fucking hungry. 
<laughs> Fat boy got to eat. Um, yeah, and uh, stay tuned to our Twitter this evening. In fact, uh, well, Thursday. Well, for the live show uh, participants, it is this evening. Uh, for anyone that is listening to this in podcast form, it will already be on Twitter. So just go to mm. our Twitter right now. Um, <laughs> my uh, and beam in the chat room says. Uh, uh, instead of uh, retraining the dogs for other stupid shit, retrain them to sniff out skeeters. Yeah. I mean, hell, Wait, why not? Ske- uh, did he say skeeters or skaters? Because that's... Uh... He, he said skeeters, not skaters. You don't have to sniff out skaters. You just stand on a, on a curb somewhere and you get, get run over by one. Uh, <laughs> there's Boom. a skeeter on my Peter. Knock it off. <laughs> did, you, did you ever hear that song? <laughs> yeah. That's a that's like an old school like like my grandpa had a record of that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's a skeeter on my Peter, knock it off, and then he'd just start clapping. Like he'd get into <laughs> it. <laughs> Holy shit! Hey, uh, we are live every Thursday night at seven p.m. on uh, Twitch.tv slash Ritual Misery and Diamond Club TV. And uh, we'd like to give our thanks to Kevin McLeod because he's awesome and he lets us use his music because uh, uh, he's awesome, uh, not because we paid him to say that, but because. He's awesome. And uh, thank you for listening. For Kent, for me, and for you, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. I always come in real strong on podcast. you have enjoyed this broker. <laughs> R-I-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-L-Y